The Mathematical Sciences Award goes to a French researcher for his prolific and insightful contributions to probability and high-dimensional geometry. We met up with Michel Talagrand here in Paris. Michel Talagron came to Paris in 1974 as a mathematical researcher. These are called the 30 glorious years in French economy was growing 5% a year. So there was money for 17 positions at the entrance of CNRS. The French National Center for Scientific Research, where Michel stayed until he retired two years ago. Michel grew up in Lyon, where his father was a maths professor. He tried to interest me in mathematics, but I was not so excited. His family has defective retinas due to a rare gene. I lost my right eye when I was five years old. At 15, he suffered three retinal detachments and missed school for half a year. That's the time I really focused my energy on studying. I became a good student, at least in math and physics. Michel attended Lyon University. I took the books and I solved the problems. You are trained yourself, it becomes easy. You start to see the beauty and the challenge and the complexities. CNRS sent him to join Professor Gustave Choquet's group at the University of Paris 6, where Michel later earned his PhD. First advice he gave me, uh, I'm doing research, ask a problem in this simplest setting where it makes sense and forget all the extra structure. <laughs> Michel says he applied that advice when he was handed a problem by Gilles Pissier, who joined the group in 1983. In probability Gaussian process, the question emerged to find a characterization of the processes which, which are given abstractly, and you want to know if they have continuous path. I could see that I was not going to solve it. The important thing is you have two quantities of different nature. This is geometry, and here this is probability. You want to estimate this number in function of geometric characteristic of that space. The problem was made popular by Xavier Vernick. He proved that the supremum of the stochastic process here, it's always bounded by some constant time this geometric quantity. What I proved is an inequality goes the other side, is that, in fact, these two quantities here, they are always of the same order. Huh? And the reason this is a, a, a good theorem is that it applies in complete generality. The 1985 result I proved is called the majoring measure theorem to completely understand the supremum of the process. It's really a very beautiful result because of the, the generality and the elegance. But the discovery I made much later in 1999 is that you don't need majorizing measure, you can use instead another idea which I call now the generic chaining. That's a simple proof of this inequality. Now, any probability student can learn that in, in a few hours instead of having to struggle for months. Starting 1985, I had a really good period for 10 years. I had two ideas I liked every year. The ideas include his first concentration inequality discovery. Seven different steps. And I lived essentially seven weeks in a totally blissful state because I know it's a completely new direction. In dimension two, a point here is further than T from any point of A. In dimension n, the volume of the part of the point which are far from A becomes extremely small. That's quantified by an inequality, which is a concentration inequality. And the work I did is on the word far. Concentration inequality I proved do not fluctuate too much, and in a sense are nearly constant. What is called now the, the Talagrand convexified inequality, which is you know, a half page long, something looks rather simple. I hope that this will be useful for a very long time. Another significant breakthrough is in a problem with spin glasses. Amorphous glasses, 
but with very special magnetic properties. In physics, starting from a real situation, you try to find a simple model. In the late 70s, physicist Giorgio Parisi found a model. He invented an extraordinarily complicated structure. A very, very strange solution. People didn't know how to really to prove this is it. Do I prove that Parisi formula is true? In Talagrand's mean field model. The important thing, as you see, the problem was stated in purely mathematical terms. This is not a problem of physics. This involved only flipping coins. So it's really a problem of pure probability. Everybody was astonished that mathematicians could establish this, this very, very important result. The amount of mathematics that he produced is, is amazing, but the consistent level is very, very high. Unusual, unusual. Actually, a lot of my work has not been read. Probably it's not as interesting, however hard it is for me to accept that. It's a book, it takes years if you want to understand. It took all my life to formulate the idea. Professor Talagrand is curious in of many things. He's just written a book on quantum field theory. What the physicists explain in their own language, I'm explaining in mathematical language. And it's an extremely difficult job of translation. The main virtue of the book will be mathematically correct and deductive. This is quite demanding. I demand a lot on myself, and of course, I demand a lot on the people who are around me. Everything she touches becomes beautiful. This is the handicraft production of the family. Huh? <laughs> Michelle was working constantly. He got sick, so I thought maybe it's a really good idea to take his mind off from math. I completely concentrate on this little piece of glasses. There are some of my papers that she had made the binding. I love being with somebody who is so talented. In 1979, Michel was visiting Kent State University in Ohio when he met Korean math PhD student Wan Su Ri. I was interested in the first look because she was so pretty at the time and that I couldn't resist. On their second lunch date, I proposed her, and she said, you are crazy. I think of the project of having her consent to marry me was the most difficult of my life. A clincher was this Hong Kong-made pearl necklace. He himself chose individual pearls, all these teardrops or something of this, so it touched me greatly. Try and try and try again. He doesn't have a perfect vision but he has a something much deeper, he see it. Time and mental energy is what is in short supply for a mathematician. She didn't take a minute of my time and she didn't take any of my mental energy. They married in 1981, the same year Wan Su began teaching management science at Ohio State until she retired in 2005 and moved to France. They have two sons, Eugene and Daniel, and two grandkids. Hey, how are you? Felix, bonjour Felix. We traveled a lot when I was younger. His hope was that we would be able to reintegrate the French school system. We were taking American classes, so we would get up 6 a.m. every day. We would study French. And so he spent years and years teaching us as a private tutor. Eugene and his Taiwanese wife, Jamie, are software engineers living in Seattle. <laughs> He made all these puzzles on his own. He would sit down with kids for hours, you know, just doing all the puzzles. So I feel my kids have pretty good logic sense. <laughs> my father would teach me how objects work, watches or cars or things like that. That helped spur an interest in science and which led me to become an, an engineer. Daniel played the saxophone. Michelle would take him to practice in the darkened basement. He'd be there uh, turning the light on every three minutes uh, and studying math at the same time. A musical family. When we were going out, he bought me a piano. They bought this piano together on their 10th anniversary. The day of delivery, Michelle was so happy that I could have this piano. He was shaky. 
Michelle bought her organs too. They've traveled to 110 countries. Either we see a magnificent marvel of nature or we see some remain of past civilization. Time together with the family, this is number one priority. All the three times we had was together and with the family. Michelle uh, the ran for marathons, uh, and then the, we all go, even the Eugene and Daniel, they participate in the children's marathon. Between age uh, 30 and uh, maybe 55, I really run 10 kilometers a day, basically. And now? I climb the stairs in my building, 88 stairs. It takes about 20 minutes. Very efficient way because I don't have to go to the gym. When I approved the Paris solution, I took my children to a fancy restaurant. I was 53, I know I will never solve again a problem of that size, so I celebrated. The solving is over. Now I'm writing these books and rewriting them and there's another kind of pleasure.